All right, guys. So I got an update for you guys in the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case. And that is because we had our first pretrial um, conference with the judge on September 13th. That was yesterday on Monday. And um, we found out what their strategy was. And it's as I predicted, they tried to dismiss the case saying that it was not a, not a legitimate lawsuit, that it was an unlawful lawsuit, basically arguing on jurisdictional grounds that the New York court has no jurisdiction to try this case. I'm going to explain that a little bit further. There's some reason why they're saying that, and um, and I'm going to explain that in this video. But first, we know who the lawyer is going to be that's going to be representing Prince Andrew in this action. And uh, he's a lawyer who's represented other people like him, wealthy people from uh, Hollywood and other places. And that is Andrew B. Brettler. OK, so this is his notice of appearance um, in this uh, in this case. So we finally have a represent a representative for Prince Andrew. We didn't know for a long time, but apparently this guy appeared in the uh, uh, conference, the pretrial conference yesterday, and he filed his legal papers of appearance on 913. That was uh, yesterday. OK, so let's get to the details of what happened on this phone call. So Judge Kaplan actually didn't go easy on on um, Prince Andrew, as I as I guessed he might. But uh, I'm glad that he's being fair. OK, so I'm always fair. I'm going to call it down the middle, um, actually call it down the middle and be fair to everybody. I have my problems with Kaplan because of his uh, actions in the Donzinger case where he behaved very badly. But in this case so far, Cap Judge Kaplan seems to be fair okay uh but the case just started so we'll see <clears throat> so the case what they were arguing is that not not that prince andrew was innocent or any of the facts of the case but the lawyer for prince andrew was simply saying that there was no grounds for the New York court to try this case. So let me read you guys a quote from what he said. Um, quote, we believe that this is a baseless, non-viable and potentially unlawful suit. Uh, and that was what Andrew Brettler says. So what he was getting at is that some of the some of the claims that that uh, Virginia Roberts have made has made have to do with actions that she claims Prince Andrew committed. Some of the uh, some of the allegations were in Britain. So that's that's the grounds that he's using to say that the New York courts have no jurisdiction, because, as I mentioned in other videos, jurisdiction is what all of American law is based on. The first question any prosecutor asks is, is did the crime happen in my jurisdiction? Can I prosecute? this case right now for civil cases it can be a little bit more squishy but all but jurisdiction still matters okay for criminal cases definitely when the government's prosecuting you the da's office and the u.s attorney's office jurisdiction matters a lot so if somebody's out of your jurisdiction for example a da in la county can't prosecute um, a crime that happened in a different county because jurisdiction is what marks their ground and what they can prosecute, who they can prosecute and who they cannot. OK, so jurisdiction is very important overall to the law. Um, and I would guess in Britain, jurisdiction applies a lot as well. In American law, I know it's a very important thing. So they're arguing that some of the crimes didn't happen in America and therefore American courts have no jurisdiction over the crimes. But the problem is that some of the claims so that that's actually true because some of the assault did happen in Britain, but so other uh, other allegations she's made happened in New York. So the New York courts definitely have a jurisdiction over some of the uh, claims that have, that have been made by Virginia Roberts. Now, you have to look at exactly which claims are valid and which claims are not. That's going to happen after the lawsuit starts. But the claim from the beginning that there are no grounds at all and the lawsuit is potentially unlawful, that's going a little bit too far. But that's what lawyers do. They go over the top to protect their clients. The judge's job is to say, OK, simmer down. OK, we're going to look at the actual facts here and you can leave your rhetoric at the door. That's the judge's job. And he basically did that. OK, so they were arguing. They were also trying to challenge the service of the legal papers, which were perfectly valid, according to British law and American law. Uh, but nevertheless, there can be a little bit of a hiccup here. So this is what um Judge Kaplan said, regardless of whether your client has been served effectively to date, you have a pretty high degree of certainty that the that he can be served sooner than later. That's a little bit softy softy. But then he went on to say, let's cut out all the technicalities and get to the substance. So Prince Andrew's lawyers don't want that. They don't want to get to the substance. OK, that's going to be a little bit more difficult to argue. So they're just trying to dismiss and invalidate the case before it even starts. That's their strategy. It's a good strategy, you know, reasonably speaking from their perspective. Obviously, that's what lawyers try to do. 
especially for these high profile cases. They don't want their clients' names in the press. So they try to dismiss cases and settle cases as soon as possible. That's a legal maneuver. Okay. So that's expected from their side. But I'm glad that the judge said, let's cut out all the BS technicalities about how he wasn't properly served. And let's get to the, um, let's get to the, let's get to the, uh, substance of the lawsuit. We talked about, I, I specifically made a video about him being served and I went through the affidavit of the person who did, uh, did it. And it was all done by the book. According to English law, he, uh, the proper people, um, were involved in uh, servicing that a legal uh, process server was used to serve that that um, the summons. So there's nothing, nothing undo um, there. OK, but what they were saying is that what he was trying to say here is that um, Virginia Roberts lawyers use the uh, Hague Convention. This is what the judge said. I'm sure you know that the Hague Convention is optional. And I said that in one of my previous videos where I talked about all the ways that American, American citizens can serve papers to foreigners. And the Hague Convention is one of those ways. OK, but when it comes to a civil suit like this, it is optional. That's why I said that there's no guarantee that Prince Andrew is going to come and sit for deposition. Um, so it is optional, but nevertheless, there is something that's not optional. And the judge cites that here. So he says, I'm sure you know that the Hague Convention, Article 10, is optional, Kaplan told Brettler, adding that he can order service affected upon a foreign national under federal rule 4F3. So that's I mentioned that specifically in my last video, if you guys watched that. And uh, I showed you guys this page where it covers uh, the federal rules of criminal uh, civil procedure, rule number four, which has to do with summons. And if you go down to F3, F has to do with servicing a, an individual in a foreign country. OK, and F3 is the uh, section that uh, that mentioned the service here. But the point is, there was one thing that the judge said that was different from what I said. I thought that the federal rules of criminal um, uh, federal rules of civil procedure uh, applied automatically, but apparently it doesn't. And uh, Virginia Roberts has to specifically ask the judge to um, to serve serve summons according to rule 4F3. So so apparently there's one extra step, but all of this is just a technicality. That's why the judge said, let's cut out, all, cut out all the technicalities, because now what has to happen is Virginia Roberts has to basically ask the judge to validate the service under federal rule 4F3. That's just another uh, legal paper filed. OK, and then the judge is going to say, yes, the service was valid. OK, or maybe they have to send another uh, server to serve it. Either way, the point is Prince Andrew is going to be served. OK, either under Hague uh, Convention Article 10 or uh, federal federal rule F uh, 4 F3. OK, either way, you're going to be served. So all they're doing is like wasting time, wasting the court's time. OK, trying to trying to go through all these technicalities about how a paper is delivered to this person. So from that day that that Virginia Roberts first filed a lawsuit, Andrew and the rest of the world who's paying attention knew that this lawsuit was filed. So this whole thing about how you had to personally be served by legal papers, I think it's a bunch of nonsense. And in California, we don't do that. OK, they send you like for jury summons. They send you a letter to your house. If you don't show up, that's your problem. OK, the police don't have to go chasing after you to serve papers. I think it's ridiculous that they have to do that in some other jurisdictions. But in California, we don't play those games. OK. I don't know about other states. I think it's similar in New York, but some people, for whatever reason, have to be served personally. I don't get it. Okay, and I think it's horribly unfair. Okay, and uh, but this is a different case because it's a totally different country. So I understand there's a little bit of a crisscross between the two countries' laws. So there's more leeway being given to Prince Andrew here. Also, he's an important person. That's let's be honest. That's also a part of it. Um, but anyways, the point is whether it be under the Hague Convention or the Federal Rules of Criminal Civil Procedure, I keep saying criminal, um, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, he's going to be served properly. OK, and then he has to actually show up. So it's all they're doing is wasting time. All they're doing is just more paperwork. Um, it would be just much, much easier for him to show up and actually um, tackle the charges. But. Maybe there's a reason that he doesn't want to come and tackle the charges. OK, maybe because some of it is true. That's just a guess. OK, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see how the lawsuit plays out. But that is the latest update here. And um, we'll see what the judge does next. I'm sure Virginia Roberts lawyers are already working on, you know, a filing officially to serve the serve summons under federal rule 4F3 so we can have everything by the book. I'm sure they're already working on that and the judge is going to prove that. OK, so when those things happen, I'll be covering it. But for now, 
That is it. All right. See you guys in my next video. If you want to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. There's a link in the end of the video during the credits and in the description box. If you want to support me on YouTube, you can do so by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. And uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all, share the video, all that good stuff. See you guys next time. As always, peace.